This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What's going on everybody? It's heading down to AHR 2023, heading to the airport currently. So I've never been to AHR before, and if you don't know what it is, it's one of the largest conventions for heating, air conditioning, refrigeration in the world. So we're gonna be documenting this thing as we go. I know I've done once when I went to the Florida trip last year, never made nothing with it, which I might eventually do. Some people just don't care, so they don't ever watch it, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so we're at the first stop here, which is my sister's house. Drop the truck here, we hop on the plane. So I've never been to Columbus's airport before pretty nice airport but when you don't really know where you're going it don't help well everybody knows how much fun it is going through security now we're in Washington DC better known as Sin City and House of Lies living dreams man living dreams made me put my bag on the carousel of death uh, ran out of room on the plane I guess for our bags this is gonna get good. Finally got off at Atlanta now. Now we gotta go find our luggage because they didn't have a room for it on the plane. That was fun. That's why I never checked baggage. Yeah, not used to this. We're from tiny little towns where we're from. Been to New York, but where the hell am I going? He said go up the escalator. We're just walking and walking and walking. Should be there shortly, hopefully. Yeah, we're getting close, I think. I can smell it. Yay! There we go. So we dressed up a little bit. I don't know. I found it Found it in the subway. Somebody just left it laying there. I figured, why not? We're heading over to the HVAC Tactical Awards. I haven't picked up my, my, my thing yet. I really need to do that. I told hey, myself I was going to do that more often. What's up, brother? You looking dog? Thanks, you're looking dude. Good. Thanks, dude. Yeah, it's great to see you. How you been? It's good. Hi. How's How's going, man? Hey, how are you? Not too bad. Good. <laughs> I had him on my live last time. All right, so we got our badge here. The lighting's a little bit dim in here, so probably not gonna be able to see a whole lot, but just gotta meet the guys from Solderwell, got a picture taken with them, and uh, we got our meet and greet here, which is what we're doing right now. Got the bar over here in our corner. It's definitely elegant looking, very nice, very, very nice. So we are now in the main area. Guys, this thing is wow. I mean, look at this. Here it is. I mean, seven and nine. I mean, you know, they should be normally close. I thought I forgot how to count. No. I was so confused. And it, counting must have been an extra. If you thought tonight turned out all right, then join me in a huge thank you and a very special welcome again to the stage the brains behind the HGAC tactical Mr. Bennett Moore. shuttle us over there which is pretty nice because getting a uber or whatever around here is not gonna be very easy
definitely uh, a little busy in here, but hey, that's cool. Let's see if we can find anything uh, interesting. It doesn't open till 10, although got the press badge here. I could get in a little sooner. Not sure it's that big of a deal. Well, guess what I got in here? Got in here a little sooner. After all, just walked right in. So this is gonna make it really cool to kind of look around because it's gonna get stupid in here. No real idea exactly where anything's at. I didn't look at I just kind of want to figure it out as we go. Look at these vans I got over here. This is pretty cool. Four wheel drive looking. Never gonna have anything quite like this. This is gonna look like Andrew. I'm gonna go over and see if I can find Andrew Grief, see if he's over here and say hi to him. He came out with is pretty interesting. There's my vacuum pump. Boy, that is quite a difference in size, ain't it? You can also see how slow this is compared oh, yeah. to this, right? Now you have a baseline. Guys have been doing it this way for years and years. We've been hooking up in a very traditional manner. It's about equivalent to 90 feet of inch to eight. So what that would do would go into your second layer and then it would basically blow through all the little holes. So what we were talking about, because a lot of people talk about the hoses that are made for charging, they have little perforated holes in them. So he's telling me that basically we have a solid connection on the inside of the hose, whereas the outside is just a safety factor for people that would use it, misuse the hose. Is that right while you're Absolutely. doing it? People yeah, don't pay attention. hooked up to nitrogen charge or and something. And that way we don't get, somebody gets hurt. Yep. You can see it just a little bit, a little bit big. So many different people here that I've never seen before at all. Oh boy. Here's a crane guy. So we're here with one of the other ladder crane guys, but he's actually doing something with it and actually <laughs> manufacturing it. But this thing is really lightweight. I was worried that this thing, because if you look at this, it looks like it's thick wall. Now granted, it's thick enough to hold the weight, but with one hand, you're able to hold it. And the cable here, they've got it with coating there, so you're not gonna get one of those little uh, prongs in your finger and you get all cut up there. I mean, look at these welds like, on well, this again, thing. The, the one here they are, if you guys are interested in checking them out, there you go. There's Renai, trying the tube. So here's Yellow Jacket. Nice and easy to breathe. We're here at Yellow Jacket, and he's showing us the R290 hydrocarbon uh, weight scale and stuff, what we got here. So what makes this thing special over some of the other ones that are out there? All these products are individually boxed and it comes in a, a universal kit for you guys to make everything you need in this box. The key features to our product is the quality of the tools. So you're able to put a different adapter for different different, different containers. That's the thing I run into is different hoses. So you yeah. made it universal. Yeah. This is just regular old quarter inch hose. Yeah. Put your adapter in there and then they can hold all the different, bo uh, different bottles so it doesn't matter who the manufacturer is. Yellow jacket style with the American made all this still made in America all still made in America yeah. sweet so. you guys know yellow jacket been around for years all right guys so now we're at, here at the Sportland booth and that's what we ran into so we've got Chris and all the hot shots from Advanced Refrigeration Podcast, Mike Wetzel and Kevin Compass, Advanced Refrigeration Podcast, guys. If you want to get more advanced, you got to be listening to these guys. What's going on, guys? Kevin's a little shy over there. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's Ralph, the originator of the YouTube channels here at AHR. Yeah, good. All right, man. Good to see you. I didn't want to be rude. She just came right in. Hey, guys, what are you doing? I saw you over here, and I was like, ah. That's what we're here for. I didn't want to bother y'all while y'all was talking. We got Mike B. That's always in my comment section right here with me at Giving AHR. Giving him a hard time. Giving him a hard time. That, that, <laughs> hey, at least he talks to me. So That's right. Cool. Thanks for coming up and saying hi to me, man. So here is my winner of the gift card, Alexander. So yeah, just wanted to say hi to him real quick. Hey. So, yeah. You can be a happy person. As an award for everything that you've done, um, and it means the world to me, and that's why I'm giving you this little plastic thing. Worth is a plastic trophy, just so <laughs> that you know. So. Finally. Smile, Craig. Love you, bro. 
Happy birthday to you. You're getting old, by the now, way. All right, here we are in the Vito booth. Look at all the Vito stuff here. This is crazy. Oh, they've got some new stuff here, I noticed. Haven't seen this before. This is kind of different. Yeah, it's definitely sweet setup. Hey guys, it's Roger here, the inventor of the Vito Pro Pack. Vito everything. This is Mr. Vito. What's up? So, yeah. And I'm here with Rick, meeting Rick for the first time. It's <laughs> awesome that he stopped into the booth. And thanks so much, Rick, for stopping into the booth. Yeah, no problem. Looks like he probably can run these things. That's pretty neat. All right, so there's just a shit ton of things to look at. Stuff I've never even heard of. Oil manufacturer you never heard of. Let's see what Klein's got going on here. It's kind of interesting. If two, if yeah. three will go in there, okay. Yeah. Again, I know the records. Yeah. Mind your mental watches, it's pretty good. Yeah, cool. So this is a little different. Literally, it puts out a very vibrant picture, very interesting. This is a UK product. So they replace the gas with them. Um, the, the one, two, three, four, Zeddy. So it takes about, that's probably a little too much in terms of gas coming out there. Probably takes about two or three minutes to freeze a pipe up. Uh, mainly for when you have uh, coastal environments, where you have So it's trigger plants. Yes. Well, geckos. Yeah. You got geckos. You got salt laden air. You got high moisture. I've seen these things. I've seen compressors fall out. Then we became the most energy efficient water source heat pump system and this is kind of a grow room system that has a water source heat pump. You have the packless heat exchangers inside here. Plate so, heat exchanger. So that's good for energy transfer. Yep. That's the way we like to kind of... Keep it simple. Exactly. Don't have an inverter board that's a thousand, two thousand dollars. It's going to go bad. That, You've right? been around a rodeo, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> Carrier. Good figure, right? <laughs> Alright, check out this chiller here from Dan Foss. This thing's pretty crazy. These are the kind of hotels the big shots stay at. <laughs> Man, that is a far way down there. That is a Yesterday it was quite busy. Uh, a lot of things just going on. By the time you got done, you could have used a wheelchair to get out of here because your feet were ready to fall off. Better figure out where you want to go because you're probably not going to see it. Uh, hey, Ben. Hey, look at that. Got it. Got it on. It's going to be covered up by my shirt down there, my sweatshirt, because that's basically my jacket. Good weather. We've been really lucky. That's what I would love to build for a training. Cool. That would be so awesome. Nice. Look who I found out, the godfather of HVAC here, Mr. Reefer Guy. Oh, the godfather. <laughs> godfather, yeah. How about the god idiot? <laughs> Whatever. Closer. Hey. Huh? It's still him, though. It's still me. <laughs> so he's saying you can do this with hard pipe, rigid, without annealing it. <laughs> Unbelievable. No wrinkles at all on that. Look at that. Perfect, perfect bend. Take off the plastic and just tighten it. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Really? Now can you unhook it and put it back together? <laughs> uh, or is it a one-time no, use? that's not recommended. One-time use? Yeah, one-time use. Yeah. So now we're at the Remy Halo booth. This is one that I actually have in my house. They've got the LED one over here and a few of the other scrubber packages. New products here. Uh, new trap there. 
Oh, that was fabulous. Wasn't what I expected to do. Oh boy. Not too bad. I was kind of always wondering how powerful this thing was. That one is uh, 125 psi. With the actual, you know, volume going through the coil, that's what I was wondering. It's better than nothing, but obviously yeah. ain't as good as a garden hose. Yeah. We also have this one, okay. which is a little bit like you can bend it. Okay. And you can go inside and just split. And just clean inside out, you don't have to take everything off. You okay. Because the, the wheels was always nasty. Yeah, and that thing is. For that, we had like a UV light over there. This one's pretty good because this one is reusable. Okay. You can, you can probably use it like from 50 to 100 times. If you, really? If you actually maintain it pretty well, and you clean them up and then you just put it back in the bucket. Go it back feels to, like thick stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, and that, I don't think I've seen many that go all the way over the top like that either. This is brand new. Okay. Which is, which is all right. When you hit that button, the timer is going to start. What you're going to do, you're going to hit that button to start your timer. You're going to drill in the first three screws, flip the bit over to the other side, drill in the other three screws, and then hit the button again to stop the timer. down to like molecular levels, very high end. What this will do, it will actually take a 3D scan of the points where it needs to leak check because all the copper is going to be bent a little bit different. So that's built into the arm of it. So he's looking and he, he actually knows where to go then so based on where he sees it. There's a scan right over here. So there's a scan. And then basically it determines the software where the various points, the critical points of where it needs to leak check. Wow. And it's so they don't accurate. have to have it perfectly aligned up for them. It just it lays in front of it. It looks at it and takes exactly. it. Exactly. It takes a scan and then it determines where exactly the critical points are needs to be weak checked. So a lot of people, they use helium. They're just actually searching for helium. No, so it's, it's it, it can search for helium. It can search for hydrogen. Lightweight gas. Lightweight gas is going to be better because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more sensitive. Helium's a smaller molecule, smaller ain't molecule, it? Okay. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And then they can find the leaks faster. And then are they able to just pull the helium back out and reuse it? Because I know it's a very limited gas. Yep. All right, guys, so we're at the JB booth now. You guys know I've kind of taken a liking to a lot of the JB stuff. So I noticed we have a propane scale here that I'm going to see if I can't get my hands on to and try out to see how that thing works. Done some posts on some of the different hoses that they have, which they've got some here that have the long extensions. They got the ones that screw on the end, which I don't really like. And then they got those there. I don't see the ones that I just recently got, which are on the very end and they're ball valve style. Just haven't seen too many people using that thing either. So we got the 3 8 by 3 8 by half. So it's kind of interesting. Here is one of the tools that I use for brazing to help keep the carbon stuff out of the, when I'm sitting there doing a, a pipe that's not in the system. It just fits right into the other end of the pipe. You just hook your nitrogen right up to it, perch through it, which is kind of nice. So the flux is on the inside core there. On the inside core, yes. So we only one rod does both copper and the aluminum both. Yes. And how does it do if, like, say we need to do a repair right here on this? Because that's where I have a problem with. That's the hard stuff. This stuff out here is really easy to do. It's like so. Say we had to do a repair on this. What do you What do you do if you have on it on the cross section there? Do you just kill it here? Or do no, you cut it? Where do you no, do it at? No, no, no. That's a big fallacy. So if the repair is on the outside edge or, or anywhere you can get at, basically going to clear the area out, clean it, and apply the alloy. People will say, well, what if we plug that one opening? Well, if you do, you still have... Yeah, I've been told you just sacrifice the whole loop. No, there's no nutrient. No, wor no worries. No worries. If you ever, if you ever, have you ever seen that? Yeah, yeah, I've had it cut apart. I've got chunks of coils that we've done warranty on, and I've taken them home and tried doing like something on this. Uh, stainless steel wire brush is your best option. Okay. okay. Now, no matter where the location is, clear the fin out of the way. Okay. At least to expose the area that you want to heat. What kind of fuel are you using? Oxyacetylene. Okay. The key with this is just to 
use the end of the swing. Really? Okay. And, and it's reducing oh, flame. Yeah. Don't get your finger that close. <laughs> what you're going to do is just use the tip of this flame. Okay. You also have to approach it where the alloy will only hit the surface with its tip. Okay. We need to activate the flux. All right. So never lay it like that. Always with the tip. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to heat. And then what we want to do is, is touch. tap it. Tap it. So don't, we can get our feel. Don't sit it in the flame because the flame will very easily melt. The well, sure. You want the base product to melt it. When you're getting close, right there, you can see it. Yep. Yep. Now, can you get it to lay down nice and pretty, or you don't really go too crazy with that? Do you find that pretty? It ain't bad. I mean, who's going to look at pretty. it? I know. I'm an OCD kind of guy. Well, so am I. Yeah. Overly. But it, it, there's only so much you can do when it comes to a look. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's designed to move air conditioning units across rooftops. There's actually nothing that extends underneath, so you roll it right over your curve and set it down. Blue on, guys. We got some mini compressors here today. Made in America? We are. Yeah, Kentucky. Yep. Wow. It's on the yeah, it's on 404A. They're working. Uh, 404A. Just a little Over, capillary tube. Uh, just a cap. It's just a, a microchannel exchanger. A variable speed on it? Yeah, it's, it's running almost just at its lowest speed. Trying to move any air through the coil at no, all? It's, it's just purely for... It's just a microchannel. Is that different? All right. So as you can see here, it's all based on frequency range. Yep. There are sensors that are built into it. And actually down here below, you can kind of see where some of the big noise is happening. Ah. So if we come down here, uh, we're getting a lot of blurb. You, know, you can see it bouncing around and everything like that. But once we start cleaning that up and getting it out, By you can kind of see. So he's actually, look, he's blowing into that and you can see he's got something going on there. So it's picking up that frequency, picking up the noise. Now, can you hear it too, or only no, see it? No, you're only seeing it. Because a lot of times you gotta decipher it with your ears. Yeah, well, and what's great with this is you can actually look from a distance and see something all the way up there and pin it out. All right, so we are trying to get some of this stuff packed in here so we can send it back, because there's no room. I am so overpacked, full of stuff, it's ridiculous. So I've got all these little bags and stuff, and you can't ship a screwdriver on them. And those are probably boiler lines, I bet you anything. Yeah, yeah steam, that's crazy. But how deep? It's a mile deep. Mile deep? It's the, it's the deepest one of the hoses. The deepest station of the hoses. You guys don't have no subways there. You gotta yeah, be under the ocean. There's a, there's a subway. In, in Puerto Rico? Yeah, metro area. You have these ECM motors, you know, the surges are going to affect them and it's going to damage those boards. And then you you don't have a necessity at your house, which is heat. It's a big deal. You can choose to uh, more than 80 types, refrigerant types. Pressure hold, evacuation, you can record all the information. So, the guy here is a, how old is this device? How long has it been out? Uh, oh, 05, so 18 oh, five. years. 18 years and going well. So what we're doing here is we're basically upgrading a motor that doesn't, you know, isn't compliant for a VFD. So what they're showing here is on the oscilloscope is the interference. But when we do the grounding through the device that they've made here, what do we do to our oscilloscope? We've gotten rid of all the spikes and noise that's in the lines. So this is the company. Might want to consider checking them out if you got motors that people can't afford to upgrade. This might be an alternative for them. Thank you, sir. This might just be the biggest fan I've seen. Look at this thing. Literally, it's taller than me. Hey, it's fantastic. So kind of cool. We're here on the final day, kind of winding down. It's been overwhelming. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, so we're checking out Crescent here. Well, there's a huge difference between these and pressure here. You go. Want to do it for? Yeah, and cut and cut it inside. Yeah, we're gonna take somebody's face off. Okay. And then try Milwaukee. Okay, now, yep. Now the these are the yours. Crescent, Crescent flyer. Oh man. Nine day. Wow. So the difference being, it's actually a laser welded rivet. Is that what it is? We're sharper? Yeah, what we do is we bring that fulcrum up as high as possible, ah. really close to that cutting edge to make it truly high leverage. 
you can see there, there's barely a gap there. I've heard of them getting closer, holy cow. Keep it close and then also try to keep it as small as possible. Really, the diameter makes a difference. So you can almost tell just by looking at a pair of pliers. Here in Milwaukee, they're down low, bigger fulcrum. I like Milwaukee, but not all their tools are good. The strippers I didn't like. 30% um, more leverage by having that fulcrum in that. Oh my, that is just like stupid. Now, these bigger ones like that too? So the entire Z2 line. And in addition to that, a lot of competitors are doing induction hard oh my blades. It's laser. Now, Grant, this, what kind of nail is this? It ain't like super straight. Nah, no, they're finished oh, nails. But you could tell the you difference. Saw how hard that was to cut that. Yeah, one. I had it like, you were like waiting for you to laugh at me. I mean, I, and you can tell the cut difference, how hard it's flinging it. The, the hardest one is the Nipix. The, the laser cut edges are, are tempered, hardened. And so it lasts longer. That edge lasts longer because you're. How's the warranty and stuff? I mean, they all claim lifetime, but usually it's a bear to get it. Well, you you can walk into any distributor and with a broken one, and they'll just hand you. They won't give one. you no crap. Where's your receipt at? No, How long no, you had no. it? You abuse the tool like Klein does no, and everything else. No. Home Depot won't. Especially on this line. This yeah. is our pride and joy plier line. Really, because linesman's like, see, that's that's got your crimper, fish tape puller, and check the fulcrum on this one. How small this is. You can only get that high with that laser weld. We'll be able to zoom. I'm hitting 4K right here, so. These are my hammers, so I mean. I through Romex with that. It okay. Real it's simple, wire. just like a breeze. There's two fingers, and I gotta go three fingers. That still wasn't bad, so we go regular. No problem there. Most electricians are gonna use these. Just as easy, if not easier. Look at this monster thing here. This thing is stupid big. This literally, that is a big flipping burner. Cast iron, multiple different burner, burner controls. Look at that freaking monster. We got receivers here and accumulators. Bringing it in. So you've got hot gas coming through here to boil it off. This is through an accumulator, obviously. And it comes into here, it's gonna boil off the liquid down here. It's gonna pull the suction up through here. They're gonna put hot gas in there to boil it out off. Char discharge gas coming through here. We got the accumulator, or yeah, the accumulator. This one comes, how are they pulling that out? Oh, look at it. they basically put a tube and tube design and so they're bringing it right off the very, very top so they can make it more compact. And the inlet just shoots straight in there. Just a little oil separator. Is that what this is, an oil separator? Yes, sir. Don't they usually spin it and stuff? Yeah, the, these are non-helical and non-coalescing. That is an adjustable muffler. You can tune it while the system's running. You just crank it down, you take this off and there's a little stem in there, and you can just change that a little bit. And I'll bit. change the harmonics that are going on inside there. Yeah. All right guys, so we are back Thursday. This is the day after AHR. I uh, ended up getting back last night. You know, there's so many things to look at that the uh, content is not really there in one particular manner so you've kind of just roll around and look at different things i really didn't have anything to really end it with it was an interesting trip hopefully you guys gained a idea of what it's about guys i had no idea although it was a lot of fun uh, and you got to meet a lot of neat people and networking and things like that which generally is the biggest thing that you're trying to do uh, and you got to see a lot of new products and things like that but I think two days is plenty for me. I think it's really meant more for the suppliers and the uh, owners and stuff like that to see what they want to sell. And, you know, I mean, because it's just purely a bunch of vendors and then it gives you a chance to meet some of the people behind it. For me, I really enjoyed talking to Mario from Inficon. Uh, you know, I've gotten to know him over the years, awesome guy. If you have any problems with your stuff, obviously go through your counter guy first. They're supposed to swap it out if you have any problems with your Inficon stuff. Got to see the guys from True Tech Tools, which are sponsoring the video. Uh, as always, those guys take care of things for you. So if you have problems, you don't have to go through hell and back to get some of the information you need. The essential support, you don't have to call the factory and find out why this tool or something's not working right. They'll take care of that and then I'll get you an answer if they don't already have the answer. As far as hotels and stuff like that, you know, most of them are all fairly close to the area uh, where you're gonna be at. For the most part, I walked about everywhere. Um, you're gonna get ganked pretty good on some of the uber stuff they jack the rates up when they get busy food uh, and stuff like that prices for things pretty much about normal of what you'd expect for the type of event that it is you know that was pretty much about it so hope you guys enjoyed that video until next time guys leave your comments down below and we'll see you on the next one
Later.